Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is a timeless tarot reading for star seeds. And I'm very, very, very distracted by the sound of the birds chirping outside the window. I bet the microphone isn't picking that up, but... <sighs> to me, this is emblematic of this background theme <laughs> that has been going on and it's going to continue on for quite some time in different ways almost about how spirituality itself is changing or at least how we experience our spirituality or how we experience consciousness what what we even think being spiritual means right what does being spiritual mean what is your spiritual journey supposed to look like Yours is, at the time you see this video, probably changing. It's probably changing. It's probably getting more... Well, I'll take that back. I'm not going to put too much emphasis on what it's becoming, at least right this second. <laughs> the point for now is simply that it's changing, that the way you experience your spirituality is changing. If you happen to be worried about, about this change, right? If you're worried about the change, if you're thinking that you lost something, how do you get it back? You just don't feel the way you used to about something. None of that is a problem. None of that is a problem. None of that is a problem. The Venusian Galactic Council, Star Being Guides, Answer the Call, Time to Shine. Very interesting. <laughs> okay, the Venusian Galactic Council. I have been noticing Venus up in the sky. So, you know, if you look up at the stars and if you are at all interested in astronomy, <laughs> you'll know that Venus is known as the, the morning star and also known as the evening star because you typically see her up in the sky very early in the morning and very early in the evening. Uh, typically, at least at least at where, where I live, right? At, at In the northern hemisphere, I don't know if that's different in the southern hemisphere, but or closer to the equator, but that's typically how it is, but I don't know... I don't know what's been going on with her transit and the angle of the earth, but I've been seeing her more than I typically do. And she's been a lot brighter. I'm sure that, you know, there's obviously some kind of reason for that in terms of the astronomical <laughs> ge geography and geometry and all that, but that's not, that is not my forte, right? I'll leave that to the astronomers to understand. Um, but I've been seeing her more up in the sky and she's been brighter. And I feel like that, uh, so this, this, this card is basically confirming to me what I've been sensing when I was looking up at the sky and I was like, wow, I've been seeing Venus a lot, right? I've been seeing Venus a lot, like almost every day when I look up. And that's not typically been the case. Typically when I've been looking up at the stars, for most of my life I haven't seen her I haven't noticed her and she's easy to notice because she's very bright and for a while I actually thought I was looking at Jupiter because usually Jupiter is the brightest star in the sky and then I, I realized wait that's not that's not Jupiter that's Venus that's Venus so I felt like that was significant right I felt like Venus was here to shine and everything she represents in all of her multiple levels so this card is confirming that Order of Melchizedek. I can never pronounce this. Mel Mel Melchizedek. Mel Mel I don't know if I'm getting that right. I know there's a, a way to pronounce it. I can never remember what it is. Embraced by light. Mission uncovered. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. I want to get more cards out because this is 
fairly abstract. How can you convey an abstraction without words? <laughs> Whispers of Mother Earth, creativity, ideas, inspiration, artist, writer, channel. So there's something here about bypassing the human mind, getting into the body, becoming more grounded, and finding new ways of self-expression. Even, even like energetic expression. You know, for those of you watching this video in real time when I post it, or in, in not in real time, but in linear time when I post this, uh, you'll have noticed I haven't been posting very much lately, and that's been kind of like low-key annoying me in the background, uh, but it's because I don't even know how to share <laughs> the sheer amount and variety and constantly evolving energy that I've been experiencing over the last several months and every single month has been a different thing. <laughs> Honestly, it feels like I've been through like a thousand years of evolution and growth and change in the last six months and it's just, it's not settling down. I keep, here's the thing, I kept thinking, okay, I'll I'll try to get more back into posting videos uh, when when things settle down, when, when I feel more settled, but it's not happening. In fact, things are just speeding up more and more and more and more and more. And part of that, I would almost say I'm having a crisis of communication, except it's not a crisis and it's not a problem. It is It is like a nuisance is, is what it is. It's a nuisance. Finding myself it, it's not even about being at a loss for words. It's feeling like there is a part of myself coming forward uh, and coming into my body and taking over the driver's seat of my body. And this is like, you know, a new aspect of, well, not really new, but, you know, another aspect of myself that hasn't really had the chance to shine before. And she doesn't really communicate verbally. <laughs> she doesn't really communicate verbally. I mean, she can and she does, but... It's almost like she doesn't care to. She wants to express herself in other ways. Uh, and she wants to, I mean, I'm saying she, but I mean me. <laughs> but it's like this new aspect of myself. And that's making doing YouTube videos feel strange because then I sit down and I have to turn back my verbal, verbal mind back on. I have to turn my verbal mind back on. And... I'm explaining all of this because I think maybe this is the best way for me to describe this energy here is my own personal experience of it. So I essentially feel like <laughs> new moon and new start is coming. I essentially feel like like there are two pieces of myself two two almost like two souls right two aspects of myself two versions of myself however you want to call it there are these two parts of myself coexisting inside of my body and they have different strengths <laughs> they have different strengths they have different weaknesses they have different ways of communicating and the challenge and sometimes struggle is to get them working together, working in balance so that they can all do the things that they are best at. <laughs> and it, it's, and I'm like listening to myself talk and it's a little frustrating because that, that I'm not articulating this fully. It's so much deeper than what I'm able to say. It is so much deeper than what I'm able to say. Uh, and I just can't find I cannot find the verbal expression for it. Uh, but that's even part of this here. 
the reminder that it's not even about language, right? It, none of this is about language. None of this is about verbal expression. It's it's about energy in motion, right? It's about energy in emotion and how we convey energy. And increasingly, uh, the, it's almost like there's this translation process that's happening where we have been conveying, um, transmitting and receiving energy in a kind of psychic way, right? We might say psychic, we might say intuitive, uh, we might just call it spiritual or energetic or mystical or magical. Um, and we've been doing that. And we honestly, we've been mastering that, right? If you're watching this video, then you have been mastering the intuitive, mystical, spiritual, psychic, energetic communication. You've been mastering that. The next level is to bring that more fully down into the body. Bring that more fully down into the body. And allowing your body to fully receive the energetic transmission without having to translate it from the abstraction. <laughs> Did that make any sense at all? <laughs> so I think uh, at least me, let me just describe how I have been experiencing spiritual energy, right? I like receive it in through my crown or my third eye or my heart. Or, you know, or my my intuition, my psychic perception. Lots of different ways of looking at this. So, you know, you bring it in spiritually, you bring it in energetically, and then I kind of have to process it and, <laughs> and understand it and integrate it and then get it into my body. But what if we could actually bypass that whole thing? So, like that whole experience of having to have this spiritual transmission, this energetic transmission, and then, you know, we have to try to think about it. We have to articulate it to ourselves. We have to use our words to understand it. And then we have to sit around and do all the inner work to integrate it. What if you could plug straight in? What if the energy could be plugged straight into your body? Straight into your body. Like plugging the energy straight in. Could you get your, could you, get, can you plug your body straight in? Or can you plug the energy straight into your body? Whichever way that seems to make more sense to you, right? Isn't that interesting? It, we're almost, this is so interesting. It's almost like we're talking about bypassing the spiritual experience and skipping straight to a physical embodied experience. And this might be very strange for us because we are used to operating on the abstract level. We are used to operating on the spiritual level and plugging the spiritual energy straight into our body and skipping the whole psychic, spiritual, mental, even emotional thing that might feel like we're losing something, but it's not, <laughs> right? It's not because we came to earth to be in our bodies. And what if all of these abstract, energetic, spiritual experiences that we have been having the ones that are kind of happening without our bodies, you know, when you're sitting there and you're just sensing energy and you're having mystical experiences or you're leaving your body and traveling the cosmos, that's all happening kind of irregardless of your body. Your body is just kind of there. What if those same experiences could be happening fully grounded into the body? Ah, yeah, see my kitty cat, she knows. She knows all about being a spiritual being perfectly in tune, <laughs> in tune with her body. So cats, guys, cats know this. Cats. I think cats are probably the best example of how to put it. I don't know. To me, it feels like cats have understood something about fully enmeshing spirituality with the body because cats I mean they're so perfectly in tune with their bodies right think about how 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 perfect cats are as a biological creation <laughs> they have some of the most impressive biological and physiological and anatomical things about them and they can do such incredible things they're so well coordinated they are so impressive I'm just I'm, I love cats right you can tell I'm a crazy cat lady and yet cats also 
they see spiritual things. Like my cats, I see them all the time seeing things. And I'm like, they're seeing something that I don't see. They sense things that I don't sense. They know what's up, right? They are so spiritually in tune. I know I would say, you know, something very similar about all animals, but cats are, in my humble opinion, very, 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 very special. So it's almost like if we could become more like cats, then that would be a close approximation of what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to convey here. Yes, thank you, Mishka. Her name is Mishka. It means little bear. Thank you for helping with this transmission and sharing your wisdom. <laughs> she teaches me. She teaches me to be more like her. I love listening to cats purr, right? I don't know if the purr is getting picked up on the microphone, but I could listen to her purr all day. So... She's probably going to run when I start shuffling more cards. She doesn't like the cards shuffling, but thank you. Thank you, pretty kitty, for the assist. See how she's sitting here? She's not talking, right? She's not talking, and yet how much is she communicating, right? How much is she communicating? She is transmitting energy directly to our bodies, right? Directly to our bodies. And she doesn't necessarily understand what she's doing. She doesn't know why she jumped up on here when she did. I mean, she did. She understood that she wanted to jump up on the table. She understood she was attracted to the energy that was here. She understood she wanted some love and some pets. Wanted me to scratch under her chin. She was just following the instincts of her body. And that led to a perfect, beautiful moment. She didn't need to understand because she doesn't have a human mind. Of course, she has a mind. She has a cat mind. Her mind is not the same as a human mind. And she's probably better off for it. What does she need a human mind for, right? <laughs> that would not improve her life. <laughs> it would not. So, be like a cat. Okay, now I'm, I'm like super in like petting the cat mode. I can do this forever. So, let me... <laughs> Let me get some cards. I'm sorry, dearest Princess Kitty. I'm about to shuffle and you're not going to like it. Oh, she's so zened out. Oh, no, no. She's like, okay. On the move? What's it going to be? Hmm? <laughs> Look at this card. The self. The self. Here, this beautiful being is totally grounded in her body. We have white doves, we have golden light, we have butterfly, we have blue roses, and we have these little, they're like little dragons. I'm not sure what you would call those, but they look like two little dragons wrapped around her. This is the perfect picture of embodiment in my mind. Okay, so none of those... Okay, so I was trying to convey something about Allow, allowing your body to sense the energy. So, you know, we talk a lot about don't pay attention to your mind, right? Drop out of your mind, <laughs> drop out of your mind and get into your body. This is now happening on a deeper level, right? A deeper level where it's not only about dropping out of the mind, it's It's about, the only way I can describe it here is dropping out of higher levels of abstraction, dropping out of your higher levels of abstraction and getting deeply, deeply, deeply into the body. And I know we're all sitting around constantly trying to become more grounded, but this is something else, okay? This is, okay, you know what would be a good way to experience this? Because this is about experiencing. This is about experiences. This is about physical, grounded human experiences so a good way to understand this now oh, there's cat fluff everywhere a good way to understand this would be to pick a fantasy of yours okay pick a fantasy of yours 
any fantasy. And you might have to really think on this one, okay? You might have to really think on this one because we all have fantasies that we have never allowed ourselves to speak. Um, we have never allowed ourselves to share because we haven't even allowed ourselves to think them to ourselves because we write them off. We go, there's no way I could have that. There's no way that could be real. There's no way, right? We, we, just, we just assume that there's no way. So we don't even, we, we hide them. We hide our fantasies in our subconscious and they come out sometimes in moments of perfect solitude and of perfect fantasy, right? But we never bring those fantasies out into the daylight. But you would be surprised what fantasies can become real if you truly allow them to come forward. It's, it's really first about admitting to yourself you have this fantasy and then about telling it to someone else or just putting it out to the universe and then actually allowing yourself to go through the transition that gets you to the point of where this fantasy becomes real. So, uh, I mean, as I'm sitting here saying fantasy, this could be literally any type of fantasy. Of course, you might be thinking of a very sexy fantasy, and that would be a very good place to start <laughs> for some people, right? For some people, allowing the sexy fantasies to come out is extremely empowering and mind-blowing and can change how you understand what is possible in your life. Of course, this does not have to be a sexy fantasy. This could be a fantasy of traveling somewhere. This could be a fantasy of getting dressing up in some really expensive clothes and going out to some very fancy restaurant and doing like the high society, high class type of thing, right? Allowing yourself to have that experience. This could be making some kind of art. This could be doing something really ridiculous in public. Literally anything. Like uh, some ambition that you have, a career ambition, an education ambition, an artistic ambition, any type of fantasy, anything, anything. What do you daydream of, right? What, what? <laughs> this is like get tuned into your deepest fantasies and get really, really, really real and honest with yourself. What is it that you truly desire what is it that you truly desire to experience? And this is where you have to like filter through all of those things. You might say, I want a lot of money. I mean, yeah, of course we all want a lot of money, but is that really what you truly desire? You might say, I want to have career success. Yes. Okay. Sure. We all want career success basically, but is that what you truly desire? Is it really what you truly desire? Of course you can still have these things, right? But the point is for this one particular exercise to really zero in on uh, some some deepest fantasy of yours and see for some people their deepest fantasy could be some kind of big uh like successful achievement for other people it could be some kind of like sexual fantasy it, it doesn't matter what the fantasy is you only you can know this about yourself right this is the thing nobody can tell you what this is nobody can even really help you get there this is like only you yourself and you <laughs> In moments of perfect solitude and perfect introspection, can you fully land on it? And this is why I say it might take you a minute to really understand what this deepest desire or deepest fantasy is because you probably have not even been admitting it to yourself. And this is, this is the thing, okay? This is the thing. We all have these deepest fantasies, these deepest desires, and yet we immediately assume that we can't have them because of all of these bullshit reasons, right? Because of all of these bullshit reasons. So catch yourself going, yeah, that's my deepest desire, but it it is so unreal that I can't even allow myself to desire it, right? So catch yourself with that, catch yourself with that, and then start erasing all of this, this whole feeling of that's insane, I could never actually do that, that's insane, that's impossible, that's unsafe, that's completely unrealistic, there's no way I would actually like to do this because blah, 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 right? We, we got to get rid of all the blah, 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 because there is a way for the universe to bring you what you desire most deeply. You just, you just don't understand how you get there yet, <laughs> right? You just don't understand how you get there yet. And the road to experiencing your deepest desire might be a very strange road. And it might be one you never expected to travel. And it might involve experiences that are very challenging for you. 
causing you to expand, causing you to let yourself out of yourself, right? This is like coming out of the closet on some kind of like deep soul level, right? This is letting your deepest desires out of your, out of your own quantum closet. And then allowing yourself to walk the path that will take you there. Because there is a way for you to get there. There is a, there is, the, the, I can like feel my guides laughing. They're like laughing at us, okay? It's almost like the universe itself is laughing at us right now in the most like friendly, good natured way. Because they're like, you guys can have it. You can have the thing you desire the most, but you just keep thinking that you can't. <laughs> okay? And here's the thing you can actually have what you want, and it can be safe. And it can be good for everyone and it can be exciting and it can be healthy and it can be for the highest good of you and your collective and the planet and the universe. It can truly be good for everyone and it can be good for everyone involved and it can be done in a way that is benevolent and loving and full of compassion. So, it, and, and this applies to literally whatever it is that you're dreaming of. There is a way for it to happen in the best way possible. There is. There is, it's just your human mind can't necessarily figure that out, right? Your human mind only knows the problems. The human mind does not know the solution. And there's, this is really interesting. Um, uh, I wish I could articulate this, but you're just going to have to feel it, right? You're going to have to just feel this with the instincts of your body. This is even, it's not even really going to make sense with your intuition. You got to feel this with your body. We're not, we're, yes, we're dropping out of the mind, but we are also dropping out of this abstraction or we're even dropping out of being psychic or we're even dropping out of our higher intuition. We're dropping out of all of that. And it's about allowing the body to take over. Okay. Allowing the body to take over, allowing the intelligence of the body to take over, allowing the version of you that is in harmony, uh, how do I, de I don't even know how to describe this. I am very unsatisfied with any of the words that I can put to this. The unspeakable earthbound version of yourself. The unspeakable earthbound version of yourself. That is the closest approximation I can come to in words. Can I say the part of you that literally is the earth? The part of you that literally is one with Gaia, but is also inhabiting your body? The part of you that is the earthly mirror to your higher self. Like, look, okay, we got the lovers here. The lovers always being, yes, of course, the lovers can manifest as an external partner in human form. Always, and yet it is also always the way in which you mirror yourself internally. Like, with two, two parts of yourself internally, yourself and your higher self. In this case, it's also yourself and this earthly self which is not a satisfying way to describe this but you're just gonna have to like feel below the words <laughs> feel below my words here to get to this and the king of swords upside down because we are turning this mental energy on its head right we are not in service to our words our words should be in service to us our words are only a tool our minds are only a tool. If you're, some of you maybe are like me and have in the past said things like, I think, therefore I am. I used to be a big fan of Descartes. I am not anymore. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's an interesting philosopher and all that, but I am, I am no longer on this whole I am my thoughts train. My thoughts are like the smallest part of me. That's how I understand this now. So this inverted king of swords. I'm like literally seeing a pyramid flipping. It's almost like we used to be an inverted pyramid with our 
with the mind being up top, right, with, with, with this mental energy being such a huge part of who we are. And this is like very specifically going to resonate a lot with star seeds, right? I'm assuming if you're still watching this and this is resonating, then you would identify it with a star seed or you're just kind of watching this video because you think it's interesting and you're seeing what's going on with us. Um, star seeds are really like our energy is really up here, right? It's really up top. It's really like higher chakras, higher mind, that type of energy. We're flipping that around, right? Where now more of our energy is coming deeper, deeper, being wedged down and we don't need this mental energy and we don't even need this abstract energy anymore we're dropping out of the abstraction and that can feel strange on multiple levels this is what i've been trying to describe some of us some people might be feeling oh my god am i having a crisis of faith some people might suddenly feel like all the spiritual stuff like it suddenly feels less real than it used to some people might be suddenly having trouble hearing their guides in the way they used to maybe they're not experiencing their mystical or spiritual experiences the way that they used to. All different kinds of things. What if all of that stuff wasn't the end goal? What if that stuff was the training wheels? Okay. What if your, your spiritual journey up to this point, what if that was the training wheels and now the training wheels are coming off? Because you don't need your guides whispering in your ear all the time. You don't need constant nudges from the universe telling you what to do. You don't need to be having constant downloads or to be understanding what's going on out in the higher dimensions. Because all of that, it's kind of like checking social media or watching the news. Or constantly looking at like data telling you what's like I don't know if some people can look at their thermostat like their household thermostat from like their phone right? it's kind of like watching readouts of life it's like watching readouts of life it's like watching data instead of look or <laughs> have you ever caught yourself you know trying to figure out what to wear and instead of going outside to see what the weather is like which is you know what we all used to do right now you can like grab your phone and check the weather and then you <laughs> and I always laugh at myself when I catch myself doing that because it's like how did I get to this point right how did I get to this point where I will check my phone from from I like my I live in an apartment so my bathroom doesn't have any windows so I'll be in the bathroom trying to decide what to wear and I'll check my phone instead of just looking out the damn window right <laughs> or like I used to you know before technology I used to go outside to figure out what to wear in the morning right <laughs> that that's kind of like sometimes with our our intuition, our spiritual, our spirituality and our psychic ability, we can get like that a little bit, right? Where we're not tuned into earth, where we're, we're like tuned into the, all of the cosmic realms. And it can be, it can get a little bit weird <laughs> when we want to be or if we want to be, if we want to be living our human lives, right? If we want to be living our human lives. <sighs> And the thing is, if we didn't want to be living our human lives, we wouldn't have come here. I know sometimes we forget that we wanted to be here, but <laughs> but we do, but we do. So what if this whole, the whole, so this is coming back to the very first thing I was saying, where the whole spiritual experience is changing and becoming grounded. But ah, I, like I need a new word. Grounded doesn't even cut it anymore. Okay. Grounded does not even cut it anymore. what's what's more what's deeper than grounded what's deeper than grounded what is the next level you know how a lot of time i talk about okay we have like consciousness is expanding even further we're leveling up we're going higher same thing here but this is it's going deeper it's expanding down into the earth and down into the human experience and i don't know well, like we need new words like we need new words. Oh, I already have a card here. Look at this. Four of Wands. Happy home. Happiness together. Stability. Four pillars. Look at these two crows here. These are like the lovers. These two crows. In a foundation. Of happiness together. A new start is coming. Okay, this is like a little side thing, side note. If you have had some kind of recent 
turbulence or awkward moment or upset or something didn't quite work out, something didn't go quite right, especially if this is like with other people, with one person or with multiple other people, I mean, a new start is coming, okay? A new start is coming. The stability and the happiness of the togetherness is able to return. We'll soon be, we'll soon be returning, right? We'll soon be returning. I might call it here. Because words aren't going to cut it. The words are absolutely not going to cut it. <laughs> so please feel below, beneath, and deeper beyond everything I have said here. The energetic transmission goes directly into your body, no longer needing to be processed by your higher chakras and then understood by your mind and then filtered and then integrated. What if we could plug straight into each other, even when we're not in the same room, right? What if we could plug in, plug in and have the bodies, have our bodies directly communicate then can you feel how the flow changes can you feel that how then the flow instead of this trickle down trickle down then it's this rushing upwards instead of the trickle down it becomes an upwelling instead of the trickle down it is an upwelling oh my god okay so actually this is not the end of the reading <laughs> okay some of you may have heard me talk about before what I call the starseed internet, I call it the starseed internet. Essentially, above all of our heads, we, you know, we all have like a soul star chakra. And I see these as blue, silvery blue balls of light. You can also see them as other colors. This is just the color I typically see. And we're all connected. So like literally all of us, all of us, we are all connected by a web, by a network of light, and that we're connected just above our heads. So it's not exactly that our physical bodies are connected because we're connected like at the soul level, our souls are connected. We're, and on a soul level, we're all standing right next to each other, but then our bodies are feel so far apart and they are spread out around the earth. Um, and so we have up until this point been communicating on this trickle down, right? Our souls are communicating, we're connected through this network of consciousness and then you know we we send energy to each other we go hey i learned this today and it goes over to you and then you go wow i integrated this today and it goes over to your friend and then we just pass energy around and we're constantly communicating in this constant flow of energy but then to get these to get this energy down into our bodies it's this trickle down right and it has to come down through the crown chakra through the third eye through the throat to the heart and it does this trickle down into the body and it's this long drawn out integration process and this is how we've been operating it's like constantly having to download updates like every day or like every damn day we've been downloading, downloading, downloading. And then we're just imagine if this is a computer, right? You download a file and that takes a while and you have to unzip the file and then you have to install the file and then run the file. And, and it's like this whole thing. What if we could, <laughs> what if we could skip all that by doing it the other way, by doing it the other way, instead of top down, coming it from bottom up, right? Bottom up. This is like almost like creating like a new earthbound network. A new earthbound network for star seeds. Now I'm finally, it took me this damn long. It took me almost 40 minutes to understand this and to be able to see it. Um, an earthbound network for star seeds where we. Ooh, this is going to be impossible to. I would need to go on like a. I, I, okay, I understand how this works and I can see how this works, but I may, might have to leave that for another video because. It's a whole tangent that I have never even tried to explain to anyone before. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I'm going to just explain this very basically and it won't make sense to your mind necessarily, but it might give you the little tip that you need in order to understand this for yourself because you don't need me to explain all this to you anyway. You, are, you can understand it yourself perfectly and you don't need me. <laughs> so...
I understand there to be a physical underworld network, a physical underworld network that is actually material, that is actually physical. It is like the network of light that we understand there to be, you know, above us, but below us, there is a physical underground, like material network. I know we think that our physical bodies are not attached to anything, that we can jump off off the ground and like, you know, there's nothing under your feet. You're not actually physically attached to anything. And we also look out and go, okay, planet Earth is alone in space. It's not physically connected to any of the other planets except through, you know, like gravity and whatever. But (laughs) so I, I obviously I understand that. And yet in this way that I do not know how to explain There is like a material underworld that connects everything materially, that connects everything physically. Not going to try to get into it any more than that. (laughs) That's a topic for another day. But so going deeper, going deeper as we get grounded more deeply, as we get into this, I need a new word. I don't know what it is. Maybe somebody watching this can suggest a new word for deeper levels of grounding. It's like deeper than grounded, right? What, what, what do we become when we are deeper than grounded? And then within this earthbound starseed network, we can have a true one-to-one communication, a true one-to-one communication and That does not require language. That does not require intuition. That does not require psychic ability. That does not require abstraction. That does not require mystical experience. Because it is a one-to-one material transmission. A one-to-one material transmission. Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? It doesn't make a lot of sense to the mind. And here, here, here's, here's what I will say about how, if you, if you really need to try to make sense of this with your mind, imagine the cosmos as you understand it, the higher realms as you understand them, or the, the networks of light that connect us all. You probably have, you know, you have your own way of understanding this, how we're all connected through light and all of these different things. They're all made of light or they're made of sound or they're intuitive, they're spiritual, they're energetic, all of those things. They're easy to imagine because they're not physical, right? Isn't that, isn't that funny that it's easy for us to imagine them because they're not physical because all of this, all of us really resonating with this message are (laughs) so abstract. Our consciousnesses are so abstract that it's literally easier for us to understand things that are non-physical as weird as that is, right? The physical world is hard. The human world is hard. The invisible world, the spiritual world, the energetic world, that is easy. (laughs) But just imagine all of that. And then just flip it over, just completely invert it, just bam, fold it over and then make all of that material, make it all physical. So the interdimensional network of light that is non-physical, that all connects us, there is a mirror, a perfect mirror, a perfect reflection of that in the material world, in the physical world, we just are not used to perceiving, understanding, or even considering that that exists. So, it is time to explore the physical world and transmissions of energy that take place physically and materially because now we're cooking with gas right now we have expanded our bandwidth like mad i know we talk a lot about uh, you know opening up our crown and clarifying our connection to source so that we can download data from most high to do that more easily more quickly to to have a higher a deeper connection a faster connection and a good analogy is like you know we all used to have dial-up internet and now we have got fiber internet 
<laughs> the connection that we can have that is physical it makes it so that the transmission speed actually disappears and it can become instantaneous because it is the sh <laughs> my guides are showing me it's like when you throw paint on something <laughs> if you want something to be blue you just throw blue paint on it that's how fast, right? That's how fast. And then from this physical network, we upload. So we're actually, this is a reversal of our function. As star seeds, we have often thought that we have to download, 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 right? We're grounding the light, we're grounding the light, we're grounding the light, we're downloading, we're downloading, we're bringing down the spiritual energy, we're bringing heaven down to earth. Yes, of course, all of that. Yes, 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 yes. But this is now, and we're entering a new phase where we are also, right, also, and maybe even more so, just depending on how you want to balance this, uploading. We are uploading. We are uploading, 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 right? All of your sensory experiences, you're uploading them. Everything you understand in the physical world, you're uploading them. You're uploading your sensory world up to your abstraction. You're, you are uploading your material world into your imagination into the higher realms into the quantum into your akash however you want to look at this you're uploading it all you're bringing you we're not just bringing heaven down to earth we're bringing earth up to heaven one way of saying it so that one day we won't be able to tell the difference. The higher realms, we used to perceive them or we used to experience them as being completely non-physical, as being very diffuse, very lacking in density. And then we used to experience the physical world as being incredibly dense incredibly material, incredibly limited. But there has been a osmosis or a diffusion going on. And it's been going on for so long, like eons of time. And it's reaching a point of critical mass. It is reaching a point where Soon we won't be able to tell the difference because what used to be non-physical, diffuse, imaginary, abstract world is becoming sensory and vibrant and tangible. And the tangible physical material world is becoming filled with abstraction and higher frequencies and spirituality and they're becoming one and the same. So a kind of cliched way of saying this is that we have brought heaven down to earth. Now we are bringing earth up to heaven. And one day we won't be able to tell the difference between the two because they have always been one and the same. It was only a matter of a difference in experience. Okay, now I'm going to call this good. Just one final reminder that everything I said here was only scratching the tiniest tip of the tip of the iceberg. And that your body has received the energy to understand all this and you will understand it perfectly but with your own perfectly unique perspective and you will understand it based on how your material world reflects it to you in the coming weeks. So trust that your body has understood what it needs to understand and that you'll be able to move through the unfolding of this experience. with perfection with perfection so 
I love you guys so much. I'll talk to you later. Bye.